to Rex Corner. I have a guest today who I've been trying to get in here, and she's I've seen her around the gym for a long, long, long time. And uh, just by watching her train and her body language and how she carries herself, I knew she had a lot of knowledge on fitness and nutrition, but I didn't know how deep it went. So we're going to get into this, and I'm really happy to have Michelle D'Angona. Right? That's right. right. Perfect. And I looked up a little bit of her resume, and she went to Otis Art School, which is a huge school. It takes a lot to get in there. You have to be very talented, and you have to be extremely wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In many ways. Or you work a deal. Or get a lot of loans. Or you get a lot yeah, of loans, or you work a deal. Two. All right, Michelle. I'm glad you're here. Finally. Thank you. Because we talked about me. this. Yes. And uh, the viewers are going to love you. I think this is really great. All right, let's go back a few years before you went to college. Okay. What were you actually doing with yourself? Were you doing anything with fitness or any of that kind of stuff? I was always physically active. So I was on swim team in high school. Um, I was in ballet and gymnastics when I was younger. Good background. Yeah, and I, uh, but I was always a swimmer. I was always a surfer, a swimmer, anything in the water. And um, I, um, I always was very in tune with my body physically. Yeah. Like I used to go for runs just for fun. I'd go for a little jog. Well, that's fun. My mom kind of was always into like the ultra slim fast and like, so I knew a lot about nutrition and well, I didn't know a lot, but I knew that that was important to keep yourself looking good and very. fit, not just for the physical side of it, but the, the visual. You exactly. Know? Oh yeah, totally. So I think that was kind of ingrained in me at a young age. Um, I also wanted to be a little actress at a, a certain time. So I was, you know, I was like a performer in front of the camera and, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. You didn't follow through with that? I kind of went through like a shy, like I got really shy. It was like that. You're on camera now. Oh, God. This I'm is sure. the moment. Yeah. No, I went through that little, you know, the awkward girl yeah, yeah, stage, I get it. you know, and I then I it. just, I got really introverted at a certain point and I, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, <laughs> but then you went to art school. Yeah, so then I was going to junior college, okay. and um, I was dating a guy there. It was like my first real boyfriend, my yeah. first real love, and he was an artist too. So we were just artsy little crazy right. people, yeah, and um, yeah. So he kind of pushed me, and some of my teachers pushed me to apply to Otis, and mm -hmm. I did. And I had never thought to go to college. My dad was like an entrepreneur. He right. owned restaurants, and my mom had her own business. So sure. I never really thought like. I was, ne they never ingrained it like you have to go to college and you know, you want to get your degree and get a good job. They yeah. never said that, you know, so. Well, I have a thought behind that because yeah. it's, it's, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, I went to two years of college and I played around and just met a lot of girls. <laughs> yeah. Just played around. Uh, I took some, some art courses like you did, but I was training, I was body, starting to bodybuild and you don't know where your life's going to go, but you know you want to do something for yourself. Yeah. And it's that, it's that excitement of living outside the box taking your talents somewhere and ex expanding them into something that's going to make you a living. And it's, it's scary. Yeah. Because you don't know where it's going to go. But if you focus on it, you really do it, you can do it. Oh, yeah, for sure. So when you got out of college, what did you do with your art? Um, well, I, I went to junior college so that I could take art classes and right. I could be in a more organized, you know, situation. <clears> I've never done that before. So I was introduced to sculpture, like with um, found objects and things like that. I got yeah. into welding. I got into uh, fiberglass and resin molds and, you know, printmaking, all kinds of stuff. So then when I got accepted into Otis, I knew I wanted to stay like fine arts, right. you know, um, but I didn't, I still didn't see it as a career. I just thought it was really cool that I was going to yeah. Otis and my boyfriend at the time like didn't get in. Yeah. So he was, so I kind of, <laughs> I liked that I did and, and it wasn't even my, it just kind of fell in my lap kind of thing. So. Well, that's how life happens. Yeah. Things, yeah. It, you manifest it, but it does fall in your lap. Yeah. All right. Then from that point, what got, what got you into fit fitness? Um, let's see. I, okay. So I was going to Otis and I ended up dropping out. Okay. So I was partying. What happened was I moved to Venice, yeah. my first apartment. Oh yeah. I'm living in Venice beach in Santa Monica. And at the time I was just, I was just a wild little party girl. I was engaged to the guy. Yeah. And then I kind of, I just, I just knew that I was so young. It was like, you know, 19, 20, 21. And it just, I wanted to like explore the world. I still am 19. And yeah. I still <laughs> All men are. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I decided, uh, I, I ended up dropping out and I was like, I got into like the party scene. I was like really into Hollywood and all that kind of stuff. At the same time though, I needed to make money to feed my partying habits. Of course. And, um, I got introduced to marketing and sales kind of like, um, it was actually a network marketing company and, um, not a total pyramid, but that's kind of the, it was yeah, multi-level yeah. marketing. There's a lot of those. But but I realized, I kind of grew out of that shy phase and I realized that I had a really good niche for selling and for, you know, I could talk to big groups of people. And so it took me, it took me out of my shy zone and put me into a, a totally different realm. And I started making a lot of money really young. Okay. So that was, 
my motivation, I guess, and that's kind of what, it kind of took me away from my art though at the time. Yeah. From there, I ended up, I became a teacher. I was actually teaching second through eighth grade. Really? Uh, PE. I didn't know that. Yeah, we didn't talk about that. So there's where the athletics come in. <laughs> that's where the athletics, and it's always been there, you know? I yeah. was always, I, I always had the body, because I always went to the gym. Yeah. I didn't really know necessarily what I was doing, but I... I would research it myself and I talked to enough people and I, sure. I mean, I knew more than every other woman in there, you right. know? Um, so I got into the gym and, and then when I started uh, teaching PE, I was teaching at a private school in Van Nuys and um, all the parents were like wanting to hire me as their personal trainer. Sure, sure. So I was doing that on the side and this is before I was even like any kind of certification or anything. Well, you know, back in the day, I mean, I remember I was training some people, there was no certification. No. You didn't have to have it. If you had knowledge, knowledge was what you all, always had to have. Oh yeah. And then you had to be certified, then you had to pay gym membership, or not membership, dues to pay somebody, which I think is really wrong. Yes. I think that when you train somebody and you bring somebody into the gym to train them, they buy a membership, they buy a product, they should re reward you and say oh thank you for bringing the customer here's a free month yeah why would they charge you for bringing them business yeah no you know the guy sells money, a it's a money ring you know it's, it's a, a money like, ring. Yeah. It's, it's so wrong so when you started training people you started to increase your knowledge as well on how to make these things work yeah trial and error yeah and I think working I've always worked with kids like I always had summer jobs oh, actually okay this is a good one I I during this every summer I did this since I was 18 years old till like 24 I worked at a summer camp called Cali Camp in uh, mm -hmm. Agoura Hills, mm -hmm. and I got my commercial driver's license, so I drove a bus. I picked up the kids <laughs> every day, 40-passenger bus, and um, I picked up the kids, and I loved working with children. Did you see over the wheel? <laughs> I actually had a little you booster. You sat on a phone book. Just a little one. <laughs> I'm five feet and a quarter inch. I stopped yeah. growing in eighth grade, so, you know, yeah. I've been used to my height for a while. Oh, that's all right. Things but, are looking up. Yeah, things are looking yeah. way up. Um, yeah, so I worked with kids, and I think working with children was a challenge. Yeah. Working with adults was another um, another entity in it. So you work with a lot of adults now? Now I, well, I work with people that look like adults that are kids at heart. <laughs> well, you gotta be a kid at heart. You gotta yeah. stay young. There's no question no, about it. No, but I mean, you know, I think adults are actually more challenging than children. I think that they really are because at least children they have an excuse, like they they they're they're fresh and they're learning and they're growing. Adults should know better. They and, should know better. You know, they, it should be a little bit, you know, they should be with it a well, little bit. Well, the thing with kids, even with my wrestling classes, I mean, they, they train out there, then they ask me about diet because they have no clue how to eat. Yeah. And the parents don't know how, how to uh, teach them to eat. And I had this talk last night because kids just don't know nutrition. Nutrition's key to everything. Yeah. And as you know, and you train hard, I see you in the gym training hard, you train really hard, you're yeah. in really good shape. I know that 80% of your diet's really good. Oh, yeah, for sure. All the time. 80% is good, so I can get away with. Honestly, I can get away with eating something bad once a day if I wanted to. Yes, you can, but but for the most part, you don't. I don't. There no, is, I don't. There's an old timer named Zebo Kazuski. Was but the Joe He was very well known for his abs. He did a lot of movie work. A well known bodybuilder back. He was back in the 50s and 60s, and he became a friend of mine. I said, Look, Zebo, I'm training for shows, and I, and I really watch what I eat every day. And it, when I eat something, I feel like I'm really fat the next day. He says, You're not fat the next day. It's in your head. It's all mental. Yeah. It is mental. He says, You don't have to diet every day. Every two or three days, go ahead and eat. And then yeah. the next day you go back on your diet for a couple of days and then you eat. And he says, yeah. that way you can get by mentally with having some stuff. Yeah. It's kind of like finding the balance. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I think in the beginning I was definitely obsessive to get to that point. I right. had to, you kind of have to be at a certain point. You do. I think to be successful, and we've talked about this before, but to be successful in any part of life, you have to have a little bit of that obsession, yes. drive, like, I mean, all or nothing type of focus. All right. Another question. Yes. Because I've had this on the show before. There's outside influences. You're in a relationship, or this is a hypothetical yeah. situation, with somebody who doesn't train, or your family doesn't really get behind your training, and then you go to a party, you go, oh, eat this, and eat that, and try this, this is not gonna hurt you, and you say, no, no, I've got something coming up, I can't. And it, 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 put, it puts a distance between you and the other people, because they know you're doing something, and they seem like they wanna sabotage you and pull you oh, out yeah, of it. Yeah. What do you do in that situation? Well, I think in general, it's hard for people to make a change. So there's like, haters and when they see yeah. other people doing what they kind of wish they could do yeah. they 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 wish it for themselves so they want to kind of stop you from achieving exactly. your thing so you know in the beginning I felt like I needed to explain everything well you don't understand like because they would be like gosh you never eat you're not even gonna eat that or you're not gonna do this or and I'm like no I actually eat a lot I eat 180 grams of protein a day and da, 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 da. and you know I always felt like I needed to um, you know justify what I was doing mm -hmm. and explain and then I got to the point where, you know, it's funny because we'll, people will criticize somebody 
who de- chooses not to drink alcohol. I know, I know. But then the guy sitting in the corner who's wasted every single day right. is like, you know, nobody says anything to him. Like, no, you know. it's acceptable. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you just have to get over it. And I lost a lot of... No, I didn't lose friends. I lost. I got rid of people in my life that didn't belong. Yeah, that, that's you know, right you now. just kind of it naturally weeded itself out. And um, I have a lot of friends still. I actually, I have a few close friends that we have totally different lifestyles, but they accepted my lifestyle, and right. I've accepted theirs. And if they want to live that way, good for them. Yeah, you don't and, judge them. You just do yeah, your thing. Yeah, it just is what it is. How do you yeah. train now? How many days a week? Well, I love working. I mean, it's my. There's women watching this, and they yeah. want to be in shape like you. And yeah. You gotta let them know it's not easy. It takes dedication. You're in the gym every day. And yeah. how do you split it up for someone like this? Um. Well, I love working out. I mean, it's my passion. Yeah. Like, if yeah. I don't go, I feel like I'm missing something. Yeah. But I don't have to work out every day. So, for instance, I travel a lot. So when I travel, I'll go, you know, a week or two without doing anything in the gym. Right. I'll do other things that are physical. I'll go for walks or I'll go for a jog on the beach or, you know, yeah. I'll do sit-ups and hotel stuff or whatever, wherever sure. I'm at. Um, but again, to get there, you kind of have to pay your dues and you have to put in the time and put in the consistency within your workouts to yeah. get your body there. Okay. Um, but maintenance, probably like four days a week. Yeah, four days a week is good. How do you split your body parts up? Um, you train like a bodybuilder or, or what? Oh yeah, I mean like it just. I you knew know this, what? but I want to. And then know. it kind of yeah, I do train like a bodybuilder. It just depends though. Like like for instance, right now I'm getting ready for a few photo shoots. So I have um, I have a glute day, I have um, a quad and glute day, I have a hamstring and glute day. These are all separate. Right. Um, and then I have I do shoulder separate, back separate, and then I usually combine biceps, triceps, and chest. That works. But yeah. why would you have a glute day and a separate glute day and a separate quad day when they all work together? Um. I do my glute day is is only hitting my glutes. I That's don't it, trigger. Huh? I do not. I have like mastered my mastered my. You ass. can isolate. Yeah, you I can really. <laughs> I have mastered the ass. I can really isolate my glutes in a yeah. way that you know. That is all. It's that's right the only here. place I feel it. Yeah, it's right here. I really have the mind muscle connection, right. and I really know how to teach it when okay. it comes to like women and. I'm just in tune with my booty. No, I think it's great. I yeah. think it's, people want to know that. And, 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 you know, they'll go through the... You see people training in there over here, and uh, they're not even feeling what's going on. And you've got to have that mental connection to the muscle you're working. Yeah, for you sure. You have to have it. And you have it, and it's I have it. And it's hard to get. And, and for me, it's hard to get with injuries because my injuries sometimes take over, and it's painful. It's like, oh, damn, that hurts. Yeah. So you got to work around to a different routine or of whatever. Of course. And then, it's, all right, so we got down how you train. How do you eat on a daily basis? How many times a day? Well, again, right now I'm getting ready for photo shoots, so I'm eating every few hours, okay. you know, I'm being, like, disciplined. I definitely don't take in as much protein as I used to when I was competing. Okay. So, um, you know, when I was competing and I was in, you know, that whole world, right. it's like, it's just like a whole nother world. It is another world. You know, um, but I eat, like, probably four or five times a day when I'm not getting ready for a photo shoot. That's funny. I cut down my protein drastically, though, and I'm, I'm very, like, much all-natural. I don't do any whey protein powders. Um, I do only vegan mm-hmm. and all natural and lots of organic, mm-hmm. lots of greens. Um, but I do take in, I'm an animal eater. I am too, and I have a question <laughs> for you. This is something I just came yeah. out from my head. If you're taking too much protein, for example, you're training hard, we used to always get like a pound per gram uh, for, for body weight. If you take up too much protein, protein can also be stored as fat as well. Yeah. Oh, definitely. So if you're getting in like 400 grams a day and you're only using, utilizing 200, you're going to store that as fat. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. And, you know, another thing I noticed about protein intake, like, for instance, my last pro show was um, three years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, I, at that time, that was my last show, and I knew it was going to be my last show. Mm-hmm. I was coming in, in my opinion, the most proportion, balanced physique, and that, that was going to be my end show, you know? Right, right. And I felt really good about how I came in. I was super lean. My body fat was super low. But my waist... You know, my waist gets pretty small, but it was still had like this thickness to it. And um, it wasn't until I really cut down my protein and leaned out kind of the same way that I realized it that that protein kind of sits in you and it's sure. slower digesting. Sure. I mean, I felt like it was keeping me fuller than I actually was and needed to be. Right. So I had already built the muscle. It's not like, you know, I was in that building stage. Right. So you just want to chisel you know. it now. Yeah, chisel it down. And then like now, like my waist is smaller now and I'm not even nearly as close to low body fat as I was when I would step on stage. You remember the you know? saying, I, I, you got skinny and fat at the same time? Some yeah. Some people say that. Exactly. <laughs> it happened. You get skinny and fat at the same yeah. time. Yeah. All right. So what's your future plans? And then when, where can we find you on the websites? Um, future plans as far as as far as what your career what do you what do you uh, you're training people um okay so i train people i do body transformations and lifestyle transformations and 
um, we talked about this, but it's like, it's all mental. So it's really, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I don't want to call myself a life coach because I really don't like that title. Yeah, for some I'm reason. not sure what that is. My but. business is, I do, my business is called Empowering Body. Okay. So EmpoweringBody.com is Empowering like, Body, we're going to put that up, EmpoweringBody.com. Okay. And um, so I believe that what I do is empower people to reach their fullest potential. Whatever that might be. Maybe it's, you know, their goal is competition. Maybe it's bikini body. Maybe they're just going through... Um, uh, um, a major change in their life uh, mm -hmm. kind of like they're at like a crossroads they just went through a divorce they just had a baby they are changing careers they want to do something for themselves and you know when you take control of the body it empowers every aspect of your life it doesn't control themselves yeah it does because that is the one thing that we will have forever is this casing that we walk around with and that's the one thing that you can really you can enhance you can you can destroy Look, it. You can, you know, there's so I, many. I, you're, you're so right. I've said yeah. this to people. I have friends I grew up with who don't work out and they make fun of me still at my age. Oh, you're still eating chicken. You're yes, I do. This body has to last me from birth until the time I'm not here anymore. This is what we carry around with us. It's exactly. like driving a nice car. Your body has to look good. It has to take care of you. It's your instrument. It's the largest organ of the body is your skin. You got to take care of that. And if you don't take care of it, that's the end of it. Yeah. It's your, that's why I say your body is like a temple. It is. You know, and it's, we're here. The time that we're here on earth, this is it. Okay. This is it. So we got to make the best yeah. of it. I want to thank you for being here. Yes, thank you. And for the, me. they can reach you through the website. Yes. Is there any other place? Are you on Twitter? Um, EmpoweringBody.com is the um, my website, and then my YouTube is YouTube.com uh, forward slash Michelle uh, Miss Michelle M I S S M I C H E L E Y. Yeah. Okay. One L. And you have a Facebook. I have a Facebook. If you look up Michelle Diangona, it's all there. I'm everywhere. Yeah. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for thank having Thank you guys me. for watching. She's an awesome woman. I'm glad I met her. I'm glad we had her on the show. We'll do a part two and part three with some other stuff she's coming up. And thank you guys for watching Rick's Corner. Stay tuned for more. I'm bringing Steve Austin back soon. It's RickDrayson.com. He is the equalizer, baby. See you next time.